alcohol ink basics. We're gonna play with some stencils. I wonder if they'll work with alcohol inks. Hmm, I don't know, we're gonna have to find out. Hang on. Hi everyone, I thought I would do another alcohol ink basics. This one is kind of fun. I'm gonna do two versions of this. And it has to do with one, um, I have something on order and hopefully it's coming today. Um, but I do have another one and I'm gonna use this and stencils. We're gonna mess around with some stencils. So I got a really fun one. Let me flip this over and might make it easier to see it. Maybe a little bit. So it's like kind of like a little Chinese dragon. So, what I do want to talk to you about is alcohol ink and stencils. First off, the alcohol ink solution is really, really thin. And these are just normal mylar or acetate type stencils that have been cut out. And usually alcohol ink will go right underneath it. And I went ahead and did a test and sure enough, it does just that. That's where you see that runoff and it goes right underneath it. But I think we can utilize these for another different way, and that is to remove ink or even do some finite painting within an area or a shape. And that's what I'm going to experiment with today, and that's how I would use it. Um, but the other stencil that is coming later has an adhesive that is meant to um, hold itself into place and make contact with the paper so that way the ink doesn't want to slip in between and flow along in between the plastic and, and your paper. So that one I think will be the most beneficial, but since a lot of people play with stencils already as, they, um, as it is, I'm sure that there's a lot of these guys floating around that you want to utilize for your alcohol links as well. So we're gonna play with this and see how we can Play with stencils and alcohol ink. So let me pull you in a little closer, and that way you can see what I'm doing. So this time I'm just going to drop you in my frame and get you in closer so that way I'm not worrying about zooming in and out. Okay. So when I'm applying something like with a brush or my alcohol brush, uh, I usually utilize some sort of plate to transfer the ink with my brush over to my paper. And what I've got here is your ordinary paper plate. I recommend something that has some kind of coating to it. So that way, let's see, make sure, no, it's still a little ugly. That way your alcohol doesn't bleed through the bottom of it because that would be a problem. So let me do a couple more drops of these colors so I have access to them. And I just got some new inks, so I'm getting also to play with those colors as well. And I'm gonna do a metallic in here because I think the metallic will really show off the details of this. And this is a copper. So I've been playing with this copper and it's really pretty. And then this is, is pitch black. So I don't know if I'm going to use that, but it is available. But I do recommend if you're going to be doing a brush or other techniques and you know you're going to be adding to your plate to have your inks available without the lid on it. So that way either it's not something you have to fumble around with because your hands might be full with holding the stencil in place and the brush at the same time. And you might not have your hands free. So you're probably not gonna use a whole lot of alcohol, meaning adding to, uh, if you're just doing paint. So we're gonna do a series of heads just to play with this a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do with one hand is probably hold this in place so that way it doesn't shift at all. And then with the other hand, we're gonna be applying the color so let's see, that's not gonna work. 
might work. Let's see. You know what? I'm already changing my plan before I even get started. This is good. Okay. Have a pe um, paper towel handy just so that you can blot your brush. And let's see, where can I put this? I'm going to shift things a little bit so you can see as I'm marking. You see me blotting off and stuff. Okay. So all I'm doing right now is just getting my brush a little bit cleaner with some alcohol before I start picking up paper. Or, I'm sorry, picking up ink. So I am just bring this around just kind of tapping it in and I'm going to utilize the side of my brush or you could just be very mindful of brushing on top like this that could be another way of doing it but go with your lines not like just gotta be careful about not getting the ink underneath too much, which is gonna be tricky. So this is just how to do it with a brush. So you can tap on the sides, almost like pouncing like you would do normally with stencils. Like that, which gets a little tricky. Let's see, or I guess something a little easier. I've got my alcohol brush here and we're gonna get a little bit of the color like that and it might smooth on a little easier I'm trying not to get the color too wet so that way it doesn't go underneath let me get something a little bit more contrasty it's gonna have blue teeth I'm not that worried about it right now. We're just trying to show off the shape. I might pick up copper occasionally. And that might help out. Where'd my blue go? Oh, it's sunk over there. That's where it went. All I'm doing is just moving around some colors, just having some fun with it. And sometimes with it, inks and stuff, um, if you play with the impressions of, and you plan for that, you'll be really happy with the effects. If you're going for something that needs to be very accurate to the stencil, you might wanna try another application. In other words, another way of doing this because you may have a hard time with control. Again, try not to water down your inks too much and that'll help with it going underneath. Okay, now granted we just have the mouth and the tongue of this. Eh, okay, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more actually. Do a little bit more copper and that might be easier to spot. Maybe bring in some of this black. We can get it. That way we can really see what this stencil is doing. Okay, so what have you guys stenciled before in the past? Let me know in the comments below. And because some people have done some really unique projects with stencils, and it's I'm always amazed at the effects people can get out of a simple stencil and stuff, especially when you get into decorating and doing faux finishes. Those always just 
amazed me at how well you can push a texture, you know, or something to almost look realistic by the way you layer up on things and work with shadows and details and such. So I'm thinking that the other stencil that's gonna come, see I'm out of dark blue, so I need to add blue. And you see what I'm talking about as far as like keeping your hands full and <laughs> I don't have a hand free to uh, open my bottle, so I leave them open. So this first stencil here, I'm gonna do by adding color to it this way. And then I might touch it up with the heat gun, or um, in this case, actually, it's more of a blow dryer just super quickly to, to try to heat this um, or dry this color up real fast before I take this stencil off. And that might help with the, um, the flowing issue as far as it wanted to flow underneath. And that way you could still see the um, shape real clearly or clearer. All right, come on black, here we go. Almost there. See how I'm kind of pouncing this on? I think that works the best. All right, where's my copper? There it is. The copper really shows up nicely with the, the dark tones. All right, I think we got a good amount of coverage. Okay. Put this off to the side real quick. Get my blue dryer out. Ugh, of course it's a reach. All right. All right, here we go for some noise. Yupo paper, which will have a tendency to warp a little bit with the heat, but I thought it was a good idea that I add a little bit just to dry it off a bit. Um, but I was kind of gentle with it, didn't have it on for a very long time, and also didn't have it super close. Okay. All right. So it did go underneath a little bit as I thought it might. And you can see how it just flows up underneath, but you can start to get the shape. Now, I'm gonna try this with a different way of approaching it. And that is, you know what? I might just use a, let me dry this one area off real good. Still in picture? Yes. Okay. All right, this time what I'm gonna do is kind of create a pouncing technique. And let me get my sponge brush. And this time I'm gonna basically push down like that. So straight down, apply, push down, apply, push down, apply. I'm 
get a couple more colors in case I want to pick up. There's a little bit of teal down there. And a little bit of blue. Alright, let's see if this guy does any better. I think it will. I'm super excited about the adhesive stencil coming tomorrow because I think that will do the best. And what I'm going to do here is kind of a light coat all over and then go back with another color and build up my colors. So if you could see there, there's it's not a solid finish, it's kind of scattered finish. So that way it has a chance to dry before I fill in the gaps with other colors. Again, how I use alcohol inks has a lot to do with how I use other paints. And I just consider alcohol ink kind of a thin paint. I like a watercolor. All right, so that's that copper there. I'm gonna give a little bit of a dry. Doing some acrobatics here. All right, now I'm going to pick up a little blue. Let's see how I got a little bit in there. And pounce over top. A little bit more blue. I can't see what I'm doing. That's it? That's all the blue? Okay. Kill it is. Now these stencils should clean off pretty well with alcohol. When you're all done and i would encourage you to have them stay nice and clean of course i didn't take my own advice and i'm having to take a cap off with one hand but i did it and i think i did it mainly because it's a new ink it doesn't have a lot of coating on it all right I'm not pushing very heavy, it's very light dabbing. So that way air gets a chance to get to it and help dry it out quickly. Of course, now it's looking a little harder to see. All right, a little bit more copper, just to offset that black a little bit. I should have dried it in between those two colors. Okay, we'll do a little bit. Put that to the side. Carefully. Okay, move my inks to the side, my brush. 
All right. All right, here we go. And we have a lot more detail on this one. And with our alcohol ink brush, of course I got mine a little on the dirty side. And the cool thing about these guys is you give them a little squeeze and it gives you alcohol and you just squeeze it occasionally and it makes it very easy to clean them up. However, I will tell you this much, the black does seem to, um, to stain those uh, acrylic bristles. I do use a cup of alcohol. It seems to speed up the process, I have to tell you that much. So you do this until it's nice and clean, which it is. All right. So it's a little bit more definition in here, a little cleaner. And if it kept working on it, I could have gotten a lot more pattern to it. Uh, under here, it got a little messy and opened it up there. So what I could do if I wanted to is just go with your brush and you can start doing some cleanup work. But just be mindful of the shapes and stuff like that that you move. And it's all right. So sometimes you can get a whole solid area there wet, hit it with your gun. Or if you did this with no alcohol ink on in the background, it would be super easy to clean up. Just get that little area a little bit wet with alcohol, clean it, do it again, clean it, do it again, clean it until it's clean. Okay, let me continue, I think, to clean up this area a little bit here, just so that you can see the shape of the dragon a little bit better. Now, if this were me, I'd probably go over this whole area that is um, a really smooth um, teal color and so it would all have a brushed look to it so that way it has a very intentional look if you know what I mean Well, stencils are very tricky when you do with something that has a very watery texture because it is going to want to go in between the plastic and plastic paper very easily. So be mindful of that if you do do stencils. So I do have that other stencil coming in and hopefully that'll be in very soon. 
and I can test that sucker out because I think that would be a, a good option. I wanted to find a way that we could utilize what we have. Okay, I'm gonna quit messing with that one because I wanna try a removal and see if we can do basically kind of a reverse. In other words, take away. So I'm gonna use an area here that doesn't have any other inks on it so it doesn't contaminate it. Okay, so let's try this. This is gonna leave a little texture behind, but we're just gonna see if this actually works. I'm using a paper towel that I've got folded up several times, and I'm gonna put a little bit of alcohol right on the edge, and it'll get absorbed within the paper towel. So that way I can pounce on it, and it won't put a ton down, it just puts a little bit down. Starting to work. Of course, I never go for the simple designs ever. I always go for the complex shapes or the advanced pieces. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, I got issues. You know, whenever my mama would take me out and when I was a little girl and she's like, I want you to try needle point or cross stitch or something like give me a, a crafty project to work on. And she wanted me to go towards the beginning one and I always gravitated towards the advanced ones. It's like, oh, but that one looks so much cooler, mom. And she's like, well, it's really hard. You really need to learn it this way. And it's like, but I really want that one. I want to do it so it looks like that. I wasn't interested in the little apple and you know on the on the plate. I wanted to have the whole basket of fruit with you know the butterfly and the the bird next to it and all the details of the basket weaving and all that kind of stuff. It's just like what? And I did everything like that. I had issues. <laughs> okay, this is starting to work. Okay. So I've been peeking, but you haven't. So I'm gonna let you peek. Okay, I'm gonna hold this area down. And that's starting to get the claw shape and the leg a little bit. And if I keep going, I can continue to get more. And what's gonna end up happening is, let's see if I can get something to point with. Let me zoom in, oh, that'll help. Okay. So what's gonna happen is the inside area here will probably, on big wide areas, will get nice and bright. And then it'll start to remove up to the edge just a little bit. So basically bright, 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 and then it'll darken, darken all the way to the edge. And in these little areas, you're only gonna get like little dots, but it'll go lighter. So eventually we'll get shapes, but these big areas will get probably nice and bright. So I'm gonna keep pouncing and see where this goes. Now I'm really putting some pressure on it to see if I can get these little bitty shapes or even a little bit more defined shapes of the big one, big areas. So we are going to see. And I'm really starting to get some blue on that paper towel. Of course, all you're seeing is the back of my hand right now. This is, can't be an exciting video. All right, here, let me make some noise. Maybe I'll make it exciting that way. Just kidding. Okay, so let's take a peek. And a lot more definition. So this one takes some work but it is clearly doable. So that will, that is interesting. 
All right, we're gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna try this one more way. This is with my trusty fun tool. Okay, let's see if I've got enough alcohol, I do. Okay, so I've got this little brush right here. I'm gonna make sure the claw's in picture, yes. All right, this time I'm gonna have a paper towel handy. So if my brush gets dirty or colored, I can wipe it off. I gotta see what's in the frame. All right, I've got this way up high, so sometimes it's hard to see. All right, I'm gonna also help out my stencil and see if I can keep it low. And I'm just simply kind of brushing across. Kind of like how I was painting before. Except the only thing is, is the alcohol is going through the bristles. Not worried about pattern too much right now. I'm just trying to worry to see if this will work and hold some definition of the stencil. Because the reason for that would be so that you can utilize the stencil design. If you get niffy at all, just pounce. If you're worried about bristles going in between, just pounce. These are really skinny points and they're close to other skinny points. So for me right now, it feels better to just pounce and I'll get that alcohol in there from the bristles, from the bristles. All right, that looks pretty light colored. So, ta-da, a little bit more claw. A little bit more bleed through. It does work faster. Um, this could work if I slowed down. Let's see if I can find another space and see if I can slow down a little bit. There's a spot right here. Make sure I'm in camera. Yep. All right. So we're gonna clean off this little real quick. So I'm making sure that I'm deliberately pouncing, but I've got it on its edge. All right, let's see if those claws are sharper. That's what I'm looking for. And they are a little bit, but there is some bleed through happening. This alcohol ink is gonna be interesting and alcohol with stencils. It's gonna take some patience. But let me bring you in for a close-up so you can see what has actually happening. So I would not recommend this for beginners because I think it could be highly frustrating. Okay, so this one here is just applying the alcohol ink right on top of the stencil and you can see a lot of bleed through. So this is a little bit harder to control with no adhesion from the stencil to the background. So don't recommend this technique. Okay, the other painted one where I applied the ink to a paper towel or something that can pounce with and go at it slowly, build up layers. This one has a lot of possibility. Again, I did it fast. So slow it down and just take your time and it could it could work. So that's a possibility there. Now about removal, let's see, which one do I start with? This is the one I started with. This is the one where I started with where I added alcohol to a paper towel and just slowly pounced on it. It took a little bit to get into tiny details. This is that claw that was coming through and 
it did pretty well. It's probably the best one as far as removal, but you just have to work at it for a while and build up and build up and build up. And it's tricky if you get a very detailed design. Okay. And then this removal is with the alcohol uh, pen or brush, one here where it has a little alcohol cavity. And that one does have some bleed through underneath. However, it does seem like the image could be clearer. You just have to be super, super careful. And I think it's just applying more alcohol and it has, there's just more of a chance for it to go underneath. So not as successful results. Definitely more alcohol in the position. So, again, recommendations if you're going to use a stencil, apply it to some type of either a paper towel or a cotton pad that you can, uh, you apply your ink here and you pounce on it. It gives it a chance to build up and dry in, in layers. So that's very successful there. And also the reverse, adding alcohol to your pad and pouncing again, uh, allows the ink a little bit of chance to dry in between so it doesn't go whoop and run in between the stencil and the paper because that's where you get your big messes like such. Anyway, have some fun and hit that like button, hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when I get my little fancy stencil in that has the adhesive. And we'll check that out together and see if that makes this process a little easier. Because some cool stuff can happen with stencils, that's for sure. There you go.